Good morning. We're here for the one year Bible study, reading on January the 26th of 2018. And again, reading such rich, rich historical uh, text. Uh, the story of Moses is what's uh, going on in Exodus chapters two and three today. So, just a few things I want to point out real quick. Uh, you know, Moses uh, was raised an Egyptian. He was Hebrew, but his mama, as we read yesterday, uh, put him in a basket, put him on the Nile River because they were supposed to kill the first, all the sons that was being born. And um, one of Pharaoh's daughters saw him and took him in. And so he was raised as an Egyptian, even though he was born Hebrew. <clears throat> so today the story picks up in Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went out to visit his own people, the Hebrews, and he saw, saw how hard they were forced to work. So Moses was there firsthand seeing his people, the Hebrews, the Israelites, uh, in, in bondage, in, in slavery, and seeing how hard they were being driven. But this is, this is what uh, really struck me today, and it has the last several times I've read it, Moses was, uh, got a little bit of connectivity issues, but just a second. So Moses was, um, I'm going to move this. Maybe that will help just a little bit. <clears throat> Love our technology that we have. <clears throat> Some days it works perfect, and other days it freezes up on us. Thank you, Father, for great connectivity. Hmm. Well, I'll just go ahead and continue. We'll post the video off of Zoom. <clears throat> Sorry that we're having connectivity issues, guys. Um, but anyway, Moses was uh, just doing his job every single day. He, he, he got up to go do what he was supposed to do, being raised as an Egyptian. But there was something in him that he knew was greater than just what he was doing that day. And there's many of us, in fact, I think all of us knows that there's something greater than what is just today. That's God's way. Uh, if we're not growing and moving up spiritually, then I don't believe we're really truly following God because God's not ever going to leave us where we're at. He's always building us up for better and greater and more and for a deeper relationship with him and inside of us. There's always that sense, there's that sense that there's, a, there's something else. Um, and, and while we recognize that sense of things, the sense of this great plan God has for us, the Bible also teaches us to be very content where we're at, that we're to be content where we're at. Well, Moses had this sense about him. He knew he was a Hebrew, being raised as an Egyptian. And I'm sure he had lots of questions about that. But regardless, Moses did what so many of us end up doing. <clears throat> and you know, Moses is one of the greatest men of the Bible. Um, one of the greatest historical texts. Uh, and one of the greatest historical characters they've ever written about. <clears throat> and yet Moses took things in his own hands and he went out and he killed one of the Egyptians that was mistreating one of the Hebrews. God didn't tell him to do that. He didn't pray and ask God if that's what he was supposed to do. He took it on himself. And so many times we get impatient. We won't wait for God to speak. We won't wait till we can hear what God is speaking. And we act on our own. And then we mess up, mess things up. 
But what I absolutely love is the story of hope that Moses is. Moses stepped out on his own, didn't wait for God. He killed a man. He committed murder. And then his, uh, the Pharaoh uh, that he lived under, lived and was raised as a son, was going to kill him because he killed a man. Most of us haven't messed up quite that much. Um, but Moses really, really messed up. And so, and then, so Moses flees, and um, he runs away out of fear. He, he just knew that they were going to kill him. And he goes to a foreign land, and he meets up with some girls that's watering their, their sheep. And then he saves them because some other people are doing some bad things. And then he waters the sheep, and he ends up marrying one of them, Zephora. And now he has become a shepherd. He lives in a foreign land, has married a foreign woman, and he's just accepted life the way it is in this foreign country. <clears throat> and what's he, what's he doing now? He's just every day he gets up and he tends the sheep. And he even takes them farther out than what? Uh, the normal shepherds do, the, the Bible said today. In other words, how I read this is that he did his job exceptionally well. See, Moses wasn't content to just do things partway. Moses had to do things the best of the best of the best. And this is what he did. And I believe that God rewarded that. And, and, and here he was, he was just doing his job every single day and Moses came upon the burning bush. So what God was telling me today is that when we do our job every single day, every single day we're supposed to do our job as though we're working for God, do it the best we know how to do. It doesn't say that we have to like it. I seriously doubt that a man who was raised in luxury, who was raised in the Pharaoh's courts, who had the best of everything, who was clothed in luxury, who was fed in luxury, who was provided the best of everything, truly wanted to be a shepherd. Out isolated, out among the uh, wilderness, among all of the predators. That was Moses' life. I doubt seriously that if anybody had interviewed him, if CNN had come out, and said, well, Moses, tell me what you think about your new job. I, I just kind of doubt that he would have thought that was his dream job. And yet Moses did his job. He did his job every single day. And the burning bush appeared to Moses. Now, just my personal belief, I believe that God had already been speaking to Moses. And I believe Moses was so caught up in his own little world of me that he wasn't hearing God. Um, but I also think God rewarded Moses for his faithfulness, getting up every single day, taking care of his family, taking care of the sheep, and, and God miraculously put this burning bush in front of him. And I think that that's how God is with us today. I think many times we get too caught up in thinking, oh, I got to have the goosebumps. I got to have the hair raising up on the back of my neck. I got to i got to go to this special service. I've got to listen to this special pastor. I've got to pray the perfect formula for this prayer. Instead of just understanding that God meets us right where we're at. Right where we're at. We, we go about doing our life every single day, understanding that this is the life God gave us. Every single day is a gift. And uh, Moses, I absolutely believe, was very grateful to be alive. I think he was very grateful that he had escaped the hand of the first Pharaoh that wanted to kill him. And, and I believe we're watching the uh, reward from God by presenting him with this burning bush. Don't you know that Moses was changed so deeply by the burning bush experience? He was never the same. And yet he hadn't done anything spectacular to warrant the experience of the burning bush. So I just want to encourage you today, keep doing what you're doing. Just keep listening for God's voice. 
Keep speaking to God. Tell him about your day. Tell him what's going on good today. Tell him what didn't go so good today as if he didn't already know it. But he wants to hear the sound of your voice. And God shows up every time. He's on time every time. And, and he is the miraculous in our life. We don't have to look for a burning bush. But I think that we have burning bush experiences all the time. And we either don't recognize it or we mistakenly think it's because I said the magic prayer or because I went to the right church service or I listened to the right pastor. But that's what I got out of today's reading. Uh, very, very much so. And then uh, in Matthew, Jesus is doing the uh, uh, miracles. He cast out the demon from the little girl. And I, I, I just want to note that, you know, what had happened to her is she was very ill and she was having uh, seizures and stuff. And yet the only thing that needed to be done for her is the demon to be cast out. This is New Testament stuff, guys. Uh, demons are real. Uh, sometimes we create our own, but our own stress and anxiety on the inside of us kills us from the inside out, uh, creates uh, stress that then creates a poison inside of us. So anyway, um, I, that's all I'm going to share today. I, I just think it's an encouragement on this Friday, January the 26th for us to just keep doing what we're doing. Keep following God. Keep making God number one in your life. And we never know what God may do. He may very well say to us, what's in your hand? Just like he tells Moses tomorrow in tomorrow's reading, he has him pick up his rod, has him first throw it down. He says, what's in your hand, Moses? And then he has him throw it down. And then when he picks it back up uh, supernaturally, it's a snake. And I think that there's so much significant significance to what's in our hand today. Where are we right now today? God will use you right where you are today in a powerful way. God bless y'all.